So uh, a very, very warm welcome to all of you and thank you so much for joining us uh, over a weekend. Uh, so uh, I'm Dr. Priyanka. I am working as Senior Research Fellow at ASCII and on behalf of ASCII, I once again welcome you all to this uh, third uh, webinar series in our CVIS Learning uh, series of webinar, so, uh, which is focused on used water management strengthening the regulatory mechanism and performance of decentralized private STPs in urban India. So our aim today through this webinar is to discuss current policies, regulations uh, that are prerequisite uh, and that promote the provision of decentralized use water treatment systems in private establishments, the gaps that exist in the operation and the steps, the actions which are needed to improve their performance, both at city and state level. So uh, before we go on to the technical sessions, I'm very happy to share that we received about 600 registrations from India and abroad. Uh, and our um, panel today uh, has eminent speakers from both government and private sectors. We have uh, with us today, Dr. VK Charasya, sir, Joint Advisor, uh, CPHEEO. We have Mr. Dana Kishore, sir, who is Managing Director, HMWSSB. We have Neetu uh, Kumari Prasad, ma'am, who is Member Secretary, Telangana Pollution Control Board. We have Mr. Ramakrishna Rao, who is President, Kredai, Hyderabad. And we have with us Mr. Uh, K. Bhaskar, who is Managing Director, Revolve Engineering, Private Limited. So before we move on to technical sessions, uh, just few uh, clarifications that all the PPTs and the webinar recordings will be shared with you after the webinar. And uh, to make sure that we are helping you as much as we can, we will uh, appreciate you asking lots and lots of questions to our uh, panel of experts. And so please use chat or raise hand option if you have any queries, question, if you want to share any experiences and also any other additional material if you require will be sent, uh, will be sent upon request. So uh, now before any further delay, I will pass on to uh, Professor V. Srinivas Chari, sir, who is uh, Director of Center of Urban Governance and CEO Wash Innovation Hub at ASCII. Request you, sir, to please set the context and invite our speakers formally. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Priyanka. Uh, thank you, all the panelists. Thank you, all the participants for uh, joining this important session today. Uh, we believe this is one of the neglected areas that requires attention of uh, various stakeholder groups. And we have chosen this particular topic uh, very consciously. Uh, this is one area where uh, we can actually do uh, some interventions which are low cost but can give phenomenal impact on public health as well as environment. So before I uh, go ahead with a bit of context setting, uh, I think let's start with certain uh, few, a few poll questions uh, just to get all of us on the same page. So Avinash, can you help me with uh, outlining the poll questions? Yes, sir. So question number one, you can choose uh, any of this. Uh, how many decentralized private STPs are available in urban India? It's a wild guess. Uh, 500, uh, 5,000, 5, uh, uh, 5,000 to 10,000, uh, more than 10,000. I think there's a problem with the first and second question, but uh, so the the answer is uh, more than 10,000 private, de uh, private uh, decentralized STP exists. Thank you. So this is a, a phenomenal number of an unregulated. Can we go to the next question? I think let uh, people get used to this Q&A model. Uh, as per environmental impact assessment notification 2016, do buildings and construction projects above dash require 
on-site treatment systems. It means they require decentralized STPs. We have 1,000 square meters, 2,000 square meters, 5,000 square meters and above. So many of you said it's 2,000. Okay, so... Uh, the, the, the correct answer is actually three, but we will come to that later. Next one. Again, uh, separation of gray water and black water by the use of dual plumbing system is required for buildings, buildings and construction projects above a particular built up area. So what's that built up area? 20,000, 50,000 square meters and above 50,000 square meters. But the question is about having in a building dual piping system is mandatory so that we could recycle the water, use it for non-portable flushing applications. So what is the threshold limit at which this recycling is mandatory? So many of you said 20,000 uh, uh, may not be correct, but it's a good attempt. So it's about 50,000 and above uh, built up area requires dual piping system as for the regulatory requirement. Next, last question probably. Yes, sir. Yeah, go ahead. Now projects about dash units require decentralized private STPs in Karnataka. It means uh, if a particular building has X number of units, apartments, then they necessarily should have decentralized systems. Decentralized STP, sewage treatment plants. That's interesting. Since uh, we have given you only three options, I think people have opted for one of these. Actually, the correct answer is actually Karnataka is pretty stringent in terms of uh, the regulatory requirement. It's actually 25. Anything about 25 apartments, uh, the, the, the pollution control board there actually uh, mandates that they should have an on-site decentralized used water treatment system which is uh, pretty stringent and the, the performance of such systems are questionable. But I think this is just a warm up uh, to the conversation that we are going to have. So today what we're going to have is basically, as I said, uh, uh, how do we strengthen this sector, which is often not in our sight, it is often ignored and uh, uh, which is unregulated in most cases. And today's conversation with the eminent speaker lined up is all about that. As I said, how do we strengthen? There is a regulatory framework working, uh, which mandates decentralized STP, but the performance is still questionable. How do we strengthen it? What sort of uh, 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 institutional reforms are required? What sort of regulatory oversight is required? What sort of skilling is required is what we are going to discuss. Now, just to set the context, friends, uh, used water management in our country is often dealt, and uh, Dr. Chaurasi is going to speak about it at length later. In three, through three options, you have centralized sewerage system with sewerage treatment plant or sewage treatment plant downstream. This is a very prominent model in big cities. Then we also have what is called on-site systems like septic tanks and pits, and for that, we need fecal sludge and septage management systems plus gray water treatment. Now, there's another important angle, which is about in situ or point of generation treatment system. We call it as decentralized systems. And this is also pretty popular in our country. In fact, in South Asia, if you look at 
Bangladesh, Nepal, it is yet to come. But this is very, very common in India where we have decentralized point of generation used water treatment systems. And that's a conversation we're going to have today. Now, this particular third option, we don't have a clear understanding. We don't know actually how many units are there. We don't have a database, effective database. We, it is often fall between cracks. Nobody regulates them. And many a times they are symbolic in nature. So to answer your question, how many decentralized projects are available? The estimations are in the range of 25,000 installations in our country. 25,000 installations and above are available in our country with an installed capacity of 8,000 to 10,000 MLD. So it means this is a phenomenal quantity of asset that has been created, but often underutilized or unregulated. And there's no standardization of technology, no standardization of operation and maintenance, no standardization in terms of monitoring systems. So today's the discussion is all about how do we get it? How do we strengthen this? How do we leverage this 8,000 to 10,000 MLD capacity to protect water bodies, to protect public health? Now, as all of us know, this sort of uh, proliferation of decentralized STPs happened because of triggered by environmental impact assessment notification under the EP Act. Now, these private STPs are typically limited sewer systems within a, a small geography. It could be a gated community or it could be an apartment with a decentralized STP. As I said, it could be a high-rise building, commercial, hospital, hotels. Now, because of the national regulation, many states have introduced state-level regulations as part of either by the Pollution Control Board or urban development departments. Now, there are also voluntary efforts because many apartment blocks are of the opinion that if they install this, the, the impact on the downstream will be less. They'll be less NIMBY, not in your backyard. And also some of them, because of the water stress, they use this water for recycling purposes. So there are multiple reasons why this sector, why this, this whole decentralized private STPs have proliferated in our country. And as I said, because of the regulatory trigger was a major trigger under the EP Act. As you know, there are three categories, category one, category two buildings, category three buildings, category one building in the range of 5,000 to 20,000 square meter built up area, which requires a, a on-site system. If there is no sewer system in place, category two buildings in the range of 20,000 to 50,000, they require an on-site system for 100% capacity and then they need to recycle it significantly for cooling tower applications, flushing applications, and then excess water can be flushed out. Category three buildings are pretty important <clears throat> where dual piping system is mandatory. They have to use it substantially. And even if there is uh, a nearby sewer system, it is mandatory that they have an on-site system. So these regulations are in, are in place. The model municipal act, uh, model building approval, uh, buildings, uh, uh, building regulatory system also mandates on-site systems. Because of all these reasons, you have a phenomenal proliferation of decentralized STP, which we don't know much about, which we don't regulate or we underutilize them. Now, this is a profile. We put together a profile of various states, almost all states in the country where at what point the decentralized STPs are mandated in, in those uh, states. For example, <clears throat> if you look at some states like Karnataka, the pollution control board mandated 20 units as a cutoff limit. In the case of Telangana, it is right now Hyderabad is about 50 units. If there is a building with 50 units, they need to have decentralized STP. So different states have different uh, <clears throat> requirement and because of this regulatory push, because of this uh, regulatory push that we have large number of STPs have come up. Now, what is the scenario on the ground? Uh, there are a couple of very few studies carried out. Uh, EVOG is one study which was very credible study. ASCII also did some studies on in this case. Now, first of all, we have to say that no entity, <clears throat> neither CPCB or the state pollution control boards maintain this data. They are mostly unregulated. 
<clears throat> consent to establish is taken, but consent for operation is often not taken. No design standards. In fact, in government systems, we follow L1. In the case of this private STP, it is much below L1 because it doesn't matter because the builder builds and then hands it, hand it over to the association. And then there is no incentive for them to take a high quality treatment infrastructure. <clears throat> Operation and maintenance is pretty weak, untrained operators. But the worst part is <clears throat> there is no reporting of performance, no third party audit, and there's no monitoring system in place. In many geographies, I'm not speaking about Telangana or a few places, but I'm talking about a pan-India perspective. Now, there is also absence of <clears throat> market for treated water. Few startups have come forward to buy this water, but the market is not created. So because of that, <clears throat> there is a complete uh, failure of <clears throat> this particular fabulous sector with 8,000 MLD capacity in the country, often underutilized. So today the conversation is, how do we strengthen the performance of these private STPs, which have proliferated in our country, but operating at a suboptimal level. And that's the <clears throat> conversation we're going to have. And we're going to carry out a number of studies as a follow-up to this particular webinar. <clears throat> now, some of the questions <clears throat> that uh, some of the questions that we should collectively answer is who should collect the data? How do we strengthen the regulatory mechanisms? Which agency should be uh, accountable for this? Is it the environment agency or the city governments? Who should monitor it? How do we set design standards so that all useless stuff in the form of STP do not get implemented? How do we notify recycling standards? <clears throat> Unfortunately, India doesn't have recycling standards, even though we are talking about dual piping system. How about performance monitoring and third party audit? And <clears throat> how do we create a good market for used water treatment so that the water, the treated water could be monetized and that creates an incentive for the builders to perform it well. And how do we incentivize building associations to comply with the standards and recycle the used water? So these are <clears throat> very generic questions uh, which we may have to <clears throat> address to strengthen this ecosystem of decentralized used water management. As I said, it is equivalent to 20,000 crore investment on the ground. It's 20,000 crore investment often underutilized and it is a collective effort is required to revive this investment and revive these assets and protect the water bodies downstream. This fits squarely under Swachh Bharat Mission 2.0 and that's the reason we have invited <clears throat> Dr. Chaurasia uh, who, is, uh, who is leading this mission <clears throat> from the Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs. Now I request Ms. Dr. Chaurasia to uh, share his views and also set the context from Swachh Bharat Mission 2.0 perspective, wherein he's passionately driving used water management uh, performance improvement in the country. Over to you, Dr. Chaps. Thank you, Professor Tari. Thank you very much. I will like to share my screen just one second. Uh, is my screen visible? Yes. yes. Okay, thank you very much. So, yeah. At the outset, I would uh, greet all audiences and thank Professor Chari and Aski uh, for providing me opportunity to interact with you. I also greet uh, Dana Kishor, sir, uh, MD, Hyderabad Water Supply and Sewerage Board, and also yeah, Nitu Ma'am, and also Nitu Ma'am, uh, uh, Telangana State Pollution Control Board, uh, Dr. Uh, Ramakrishnan Rao, President Kradai and also K. Bhaskarji, MD, Revolve Engineers. This uh, uh, 
topic is in fact so much important at this juncture that uh, you may be aware uh, Swachh Bharat mission was launched on 1st October uh, 2021 and uh, from that uh, uh, from that point of view itself, we were facing this challenge that used water management in all towns, how to take up and because so many problems are there, I will be counting one by one, but uh, as, as, uh, while implementing this Swachh Bharat Mission 1, we increasingly realized that major portion is used water management and that has to be dealt not only only for larger towns but even smaller towns and as Professor Chari very clearly explained that uh, many states proactively, they are going to, let us say, decentralized level and trying to reduce this, not only burden of treatment, but locally managing and handling this uh, uh, wastewater and also for beneficial purposes, beneficial purposes, keeping all these aspects, uh, the, the implementation of used water management uh, uh, becomes very challenging and uh, you, you might have heard at many point of time that Honorable Prime Minister uh, uh, clearly matlab, set a target for us that no used water disposal in water body uh, our environment without any treatment. That is the first thing that, uh, that, that we, we are uh, trying to achieve that. And apart from that, the protocols that we are implementing that not only treating used water, but also how to achieve level of sustainability. Often you might have seen a lot of uh, projects has been implemented in the past, but for one or another reason, they were not matlab, fully functional. And uh, th this is the case across all the states in the country. Similarly, this used water and septage management also, at least in all towns, this minimum thing has to be done, sustainability in 50% towns. And this uh, uh, important task, we are tasked to do in over 4,200 towns. They are all uh, uh, towns less than one lakh population. And under used water management, if you see more than two third of outlay is given for it, which is around 90,000 crore if you see in financial terms. And around 1300 MLD capacity we are supposed to uh, create under this mission. So uh, naturally, the learning from these things is going to be very helpful, not only for us implementing the mission, but each one of you which are a uh, prominent stakeholder. Uh, uh, excuse me, uh, sir. Sorry to interrupt. I think the slides are not moving. Uh, okay, slides are not moving. Now, now yes, second sir. slide. Second sir, slide can, is coming. Sir, can oh. you make it full screen, sir? Can I? Uh, yes, I have made full screen. Is it visible? This second slide. Uh, no. No, I think you need to exit and then uh, share it again. Reshare it. Uh, yes, sir. Okay, Stop okay. sharing and share it again. Okay. Hello, there. Hello, colleague. Hello, colleague. Hello, colleague. Uh, it is visible, sir. You can make it full screen. Yes. Now yeah. it is moving. Please confirm it is moving. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Uh, sir, you... uh, we will... Yes, sir, we will share, sir. Yes. yes, sir, we will share. Avinash, please share the screen. Yes, sir. We, uh, it's shared, sir. Uh, yeah. Uh, go to next slide, please. Next slide. Uh, yes, next slide. So, uh, 
uh, as I mentioned in uh, Swachh Bharat Mission 1, more focus was on solid waste management, but this huge water, which was a major, uh, I will say, uh, cause a problem for our water bodies, our drinking water sources, even groundwater, these all things were uh, uh, going contaminated because of this even 75% fresh water sources, as you know, it has been, uh, it is reported to be contaminated because of that. And Honorable NGT and before that, Honorable Supreme Court has been uh, uh, pursuing this matter so that uh, this situation is improved. Next, please. Yeah, these are some of the photographs that what is the uh, scenario in the towns. So uh, th this these things only prompted that used water has to be holistically treated. Next, please. Yeah, and uh, apart from used water, even fecal sludge also because our 60% of the population is dependent on that. So this used water, uh, this fecal sludge properly uh, desludging wherever needed and uh, to be, uh, to be uh, brought to designated place and treated was also a challenge. So that also we are handling. Next, please. Yeah, so uh, if you see used water management, broadly it can be categorized in two, uh, uh, two ways it can be done. That is one off-site sanitation system where it is network-based system, whether centralized or decentralized. And another is on-site sanitation system where uh, basically locally it may be septic tank or maybe uh, some uh, individual uh, unit uh, installed in the houses, for example, just like Jokaso and similar sort of things. So these two sort of things are there and in both the treatment processes, sludge is generated that also need to be done and sludge not only generated in the process, but uh, routinely also if we do OEM, there also this sludge and other things uh, used to come. Next please. So this is just, I wanted to uh, set a context that it, it is similar to that offsite sanitation system. It may be centralized or decentralized. Next. Yeah, this is this should be on-site sanitation system, but often it ends up that only a septic tank is there. Often soap pit is absent, and even soap pit is there that is not properly maintained. And whatever the used water is there, uh, effluent from septic tank that comes to the uh, let us say drain or maybe in the open it is lying. So that is a cause of pollution and environmental degradation. Go to next one, please. Yeah, so apart from that, this uh, fecal sludge also through FSSM system, it is uh, conveyed and treated. So uh, I, I will explain many cases, may, uh, this is being done as a standalone, uh, uh, let us say, treatment facility also, but there is ample opportunity uh, and uh, feasibility that it can be treated as a co-treatment where it will not only save cost, resources and effort, but uh, it can be treated in the same facility at no cost and that is TP's cost we are supporting under Swachh Bharat Mission. So, these efforts will be able to address not only used water problem, but the sludge problem also which required occasional uh, desludging based on need in uh, septic tanks. Next, please. Yeah. So uh, I was mentioning the main main problem that is actual scenario apart from the towns which are not having sewerage system. This is the scenario. And if you see two things very important, the source of pollution comes uh, from the toilet where uh, often people call it black water, where let us say uh, 30 to 40 percent or sometimes 50 percent BOD load is there. And uh, this wash basin, bath and kitchen, they also carry uh, 50 to 60 percent BOD load. These all the things, anyway, it goes in the drain where sewer network is not there. And over and above this effluent from septic tank, that also goes. So if you say around 80 to 85% pollution is already going apart from what is being treated in septic tank. And sludge is one thing that sometimes taken out and done, that it, it is important for its functioning, but its contribution in overall uh, that uh, pollution generated is very minuscule. So this prompts us that used water should not be left without proper collecting treatment and even, of course, beneficial uh, recycling and reuse. Next, please. Uh, so the approach that we are following under Swachh Bharat Mission is we understand that some states and uh, ideally if we see individual households should be connected with uh, 
a sewer network after that it should come to uh, some centralized or decentralized treatment plant and after that it can be used either uh, for uh, uh, flushing and gardening or maybe for industry or maybe for agriculture that is the ideal thing ideal and uh, not only ideal but uh, I will say most of the country, developed country are following. So this is the most desired option. But to reach that, it requires a lot of capacity, resources, and time. And sometimes doing in one go uh, become a challenge, seeing the uh, capacity of our ULB also their uh, ability to sustain and operate and maintain. So keeping all these things for towns less than one, one lakh population, we are suggesting that let us go in incremental manner. Wherever fund is not available, even this huge water can be done only through intersection diversion, the drain you saw, saw earlier where it is flowing, they can be intercepted and treated in uh, some of the robust technology that is available where less skill is required, less OEM is required. And uh, of course, uh, towns and cities which are having population, let us say more than 30,000 or 50,000, their sewer network also we are recommending that at least to begin with, let us plan on whole city basis and start implementing from any of the core area or selected world that is uh, suitable for the ULB. Accordingly, uh, the, the, uh, the advantage of this will be that once this sort of planning is put in one go, after that, that can be implemented based on availability of funds in parts. So this system will help to have a robust system in coming years and of course uh, always we are hearing many times that honorable prime minister uh, mentions that by india at 2047 we are going to be a developed nation we are going to give our next generation a developed country in developed country this used water and uh, uh, of course solid waste they cannot be left like that and going one step ahead not only treatment but its circularity is also important where government of india is working so those things also need to be in embedded in the planning so that these things not only minimize the uh, resource requirement at ULB level, but more and more it becomes sustainable and with a little bit financial support from the uh, ULB and government. So this is the approach we are suggesting. Next, please. Yeah, if, if we see in this approach at one time, uh, immediate financial requirement become almost half in conventional system where uh, many states like Gujarat, even now Maharashtra is also planning Haryana, Punjab, they are going on covering individual household and each and every household in the ULB. So if we see that conventional thing, it will be costing something like per capita, let us say 8,000, 9,000, but if we go in incremental way, it will be 4,000 and something like that. So it become more affordable in different class of population. Next please. And regarding that fecal sludge, as, as I mentioned, uh, there are also options where STPs are available. They can be co-treated without having any other uh, facility. Uh, that, that can be immediately uh, done, whether through solid liquid separator or even in next slide, I will show, please go to next slide, where directly also it can be put uh, through this because the quantity of fecal sludge is only uh, in KLD in 2000, 3000 liter, but the flow that is coming often it is in MLD million liters more than 1000 times. So whatever even concentration is two, three, four times more than the sewage, it will have minuscule impact and it will be able to uh, take care, especially in smaller towns. So, uh, this is one thing that we are suggesting that, see, in entire way of planning, if systems are not planned economically, later on operation, maintenance and other things become difficult and things will not op be properly operated and the objective for which it is created, it will be, let us say, bypassed if electricity bills are not paid and the objective for which we have created, that will not be fulfilled. So one thing is very important in planning depending on resources, depending on ULB capacity, and depending on local requirement, things should be planned in such a way, it may not be very, let us say, 100% as per now, but it can be, uh, let us say, 80-85% giving results, but sustainable and people can afford and maintain that. This is the need of the hour. Next, please. 
Yeah, these are the some of the sludge drying bed examples. Like in many states, I will show uh, a standalone FSTP has been created that is casting much more, much more, even something more is added, it can be able to treat sewage also. Those things, many examples are available, even occasionally that comes an alert we are going to issue that this this sludging earlier it used to be done on annual basis uh, uh, periodic one scheduled this sludging that was forcing a lot of pressure on ULB and also people and compulsorily because of getting good marks in such survection and other they were doing that we are relaxing and we are telling that you can go on need based disludging so that will further optimize cost and these things even there is no treatment plant there is no other system making some sort of sludge drying bed alone will be able to handle because the sludge that is coming from septic tank is digested नेक्स्ट ये एक दो हम कास्ट दिखाना चाह रहे थे जो बहुत ज्यादा है 60 लाख 70 लाख पर केएलडी दिस थिंग्स शुड बी माइंडलेस स्पेंडिंग ऑफ मनी शुड बी अवॉइडेड 5 केएलडी के लिए 73 लाख दैट शुड बी अवॉइडेड नेक्स्ट प्लीज Yes, these regulatory requirement I am coming, this is the uh, important thing where Honorable Supreme Court or NGT is also monitoring. So if things are not done properly used water, then a lot of uh, uh, this uh, uh, financial uh, penalty and other things are coming which should be avoided. And that's why advance uh, let us say planning should be made. Next, please. Next. Uh, yes, here it is important that whatever this, uh, because pollution control boards cooperation become very important, the standards should be uh, based on requirement like this UN Council mentions no higher quality water should be used for a purpose that can tolerate a lower grade. So unless urban development department and pollution control board together uh, join hands and work for this cause, then urban development will be in trouble and pollution control will be going by this that will put a lot of pressure. This needs to be relooked. We are trying, but before it comes, both should do together and go ahead. Next, please. Next. Yeah, this is the last uh, last one. This way forward, that monitoring mechanism should be robust uh, for whatever the plants are there. Professor uh, Chari uh, mentioned that more than ten thousand kakari some plants are there. Hand holding for OEM also not only from urban development but pollution control boards also should show them way how they should maintain these small small uh, STPs because uh, alone alone they are a fault and their knowledge may not be sufficient. Then. These are the living of the penalty. Another thing, these are the some of the recommendations. This slide will be forwarded to you. Next, next, please. Thank you. So, uh, these are the some of the regulations that will be required to be reviewed. I am not going, but these are the three things. I think 74, it is old, and other things also to rationalize current requirement. Yes, next, please. Yeah, these, these are only coordinated efforts. Go to next. I think this is the last. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. <clears throat> now, uh, I think you have beautifully outlined the vision <laughs> under the Swachh Bharat mission for dealing with the used water management. And I think you have also indicated that about uh, 1300 MLD of used water treatment capacity or wastewater treatment capacity would be envisaged as part of the SBM 2.0. Uh, can you hear me or uh, is there any problem with the voice? Uh, no, no, fine. It is, fine. It is yeah. audible, sir. It's clear. Yeah. So I think the point I, I, I would like to amplify and probably request uh, Dana Kishore sir to come in. While the national government is looking at used water management from a city government's perspective, I think a large, a large volume or large capacity is built parallelly, maybe much more than 1300 MLD capacity without our actually oversight, without our regulations. Without our investment, the best part is it's not the public sector investment, it's a private sector investment. Now, how do we amplify that? How do we control it? Can, uh, can all of you uh, mute yourself, please, those who are not speaking? Thank you. So, how do we sort of take advantage of the private sector investment and strengthen the hands of the uh, public sector investments coming under Swachh Bharat Mission 2.0? And I, as I repeat again, under SBM, we are thinking of 1300 MLD. The private sector parallelly in the next five years probably is going to build more than 2000 or 2500 MLD capacity. And that's, I think, is a beauty of uh, uh, the current system that we have. Unfortunately, not regulated. 
I would now request uh, Danakishor sir to share his views because he has handled both from from all angles, from the water utility angle as well as the city government angle. And I would request him to share his views, particularly his views on how do we strengthen the current system, which is often uh, not really in place right now. There's no system in place. Over to you. Uh, thank you, Professor Chari. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yeah, thank you, and uh, thank you all fellow panelists. Anaiki is excited. Yes, ma'am. And could you mute your audio, please, for not speaking? Am I visible, Mr. Chari? Yes, sir. You are visible. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Yes, thank sir. you very much, and uh, you know, other participants, Neetu, I think uh, she is there, and uh, very good introductory remarks and uh, captured by uh, Mr. Chari, Professor Chari, and also thank uh, uh, um, Chara Saji for giving uh, you know what's happening at one different level. Uh, you see, uh, the topic given to me is that perspectives from my utility organization. Uh, you know, water board is uh, Hyderabad, water, Metro Water Board and Sewerage Board is the utility organization for Hyderabad. And we take care of nearly about uh, 12.5 lakh connections and maybe 1.2 crore population. Uh, uh, but I'd like to set a few things in motion. Uh, you see, who are the users of these, uh, you know, these uh, on-site systems? This is the first thing we should ask a question. Who are these users? You know, what is their perspective of it? What are a lack of perspective from them? All these users, you know, top tier, top tier population. Uh, I'm sure you all agree with me. Uh, Mr. Chari, am I audible? I mean, I think it's seen on here. So. Yes, sir. You are very much audible, sir. Yeah, thank you. So, who are these guys? Who are these people? These are all gated communities or, you know, huge uh, flats, apartment complexes. And, uh, you know, people who are, you know, we can say that they're reasonably well-to-do and all that. Point is, if they're well-to-do, highly educated, and if they're capable of setting up one crore or 70 lakhs or two crores worth of equipment for an STP, which we should not call STP, I mean, we should call it as a water reclamation plant or something like that. STP is a misnomer because we're giving a re reused water we are giving. And I think we need to change that. What I'm saying is these are all informed clientele who certainly have a social media and account and they're all on Twitter and all whatnot and Instagrams. And how come, you know, they say that we cannot maintain this system? Is it because of a lack of regulation or is it because they don't know what's happening or they don't have technology perspectives because builders make them and give it to them. They don't know how to maintain them. Are there no standards for, uh, you know, maintenance of them? What are standards of what used water or standards of biosolids or sludge or something like that? I think it's a combination of all of them. When a climate change is the, you know, byword in now, and, you know, uh, Honorable uh, uh, Prime Minister, the G20 organization, and recently COP27 has happened in Egypt. So when climate change is the byword and all the educated clientele of these uh, people who are having these, uh, you know, users, who are users, if they say that, they are, when they're not able to maintain it could be because of lack of knowledge, or it could be apathy, or, Sometimes they ask, you know, we are not able to maintain it because we're not able to pay maintenance for that. Are they not able to pay that maintenance? These are the, some important questions we should look, we need to ask. These are not bottom of the pyramid, you know, slum dwellers. No, not at all. These are the people, you know, who bought maybe two crores, three crores or five crores kind of, uh, you know, villas or apartments. They know what is happening and they do know about climate change, at least 15 to 20 percent of them. Oh, I think what the third is... What is happening on the ground needs to be studied. We attempted that kind of a thing recently. And in fact, ASCII has also been a sometime partner in that. We utilized an organization called National Institute of Urban Management in Hyderabad, which is a you know, municipal institution uh, set up. And they studied these uh, SCPs. Let us see what does this say. You know, this study revealed we have about anywhere between 800 to 900 uh, numbers of, uh, you know, smaller on-site plantation plants. When we studied only 300, we could study. 67% of them are functional. The rest of them are not functioning or suboptimally functional because they are dysfunctional also. And then we noticed that the community hardly knows about, except for the office bearers or, you know, who are organizing board of that organization of that you know, community or gated community or apartment complex. They also complain about commercial power tariff. Power tariff is very high. And then they don't know what to do with this reused water, treated water, what is to be done, sludge is produced, what is to be done with the sludge. 
this is some of the questions so then we need to ask now that why is not being you know there is institutional framework is absent you now coming from my perspective from our organization perspective of metro water board i think uh, you know metro water boards are water utilities for that matter in the country they are highly burdened with the daily water maintenance uh, down times how to maintain them customer grievances revenue collection and all that so we need to essentially ask a question is it necessary for in the informed clientele highly educated people they need to be centrally controlled is it necessary a central control authority is required we have organizational you know law framework is there you know as mr chari told initially there is a you know acts are there and you know cpcb cpcb guidelines are there pollution control board guidelines are there what to do with this now how many units have to produce what kind of thing all the main double, double dual pumping systems all are there if these are things i think the clientele that is users have to be equipped with adequate technology and institutional framework so that they can start operating let us look at one small on site plantation on site plant maybe 50 kg 100 kg the kind of a thing or 500 kg also it produces grey water how much grey water is produced what are the parameters vod cod what is the tds what is the ph these have to be measured and then where what happens to this water has to be measured i am sure gardening is there plumbing you know i mean uh, you know other kind of washes and they use it so what to do with the rest of the water available water so coming to monitoring i suggest my perspective on this is that there is an industry 4.0 atmosphere now so governance 4.0 also has to come industry 4.0 you have a internet you know iot instrumentation okay internet of things and then you have a flow meter you have a need dashboard for that correct all the dashboard you know correct all the information of all 800 or 25000 in the country you know you can you know send the data on on web you can send the data on internet you can send the data collect the data and see what's monitoring how much pH is maintained how much water they need to produce per day and how much water is going out and how much has been treated how much of power has been consumed all this can be calculated in iot systems and under the 4.0 platforms there are embedded technologies are available they can these embedded technologies can be given into this and these guidelines can be given either the city governments or the pollution control boards or central pollution control board they can give these guidelines and they must be made part of that you know on site systems so that automatic monitoring will happen otherwise you know keeping personnel on that when human resources waste state and it becomes very expensive this is my first take on what has to happen on technology front and and what to happen on accountability and all that and then second day is bring awareness to all these people users they are highly educated i am living in a gated community we have an stp so that i should know about this give them a small powerpoint presentation what's happening you see what has to be realized is if you let out the water and it has to go into a pipe system each pipe whether it's steel pipe or whatever pipe you are doing you have to dig you know ground and you have to lay you know concretizing these are all carbon rich concrete is highly carbon rich when iron kind of a pipes are produced they are carbon rich when we are talking about net zero an honorable prime minister says that by 2070 country has to be net zero economy in terms of carbon we cannot keep on carbon rich kind of expenditure so are we we need to look at on site systems even for individual houses also like you know right now in uh, metro water board of hyderabad we are, we are spending somewhere around 4000 crores to make it entire city sewage free all sewage is treated but what about vertical growth happening future growth is happening you know mr chaudhary sir talked about you know a core city peri urban areas core city vertical growth is happening wherever vertical growth is happening is it possible to for even individual house also like it happens in japan and some other countries household modules to be done so that at at, at home at home itself it has to be reduced water imprint or carbon imprint has to be reduced these things are to be thought about i think this is a challenge we have in india now uh, from what utility perspective how do we monitor them as i said i think right now what we are trying to do we you know we have a environmental control cell one has been monitored and then we are placing ngos and uh, uh, so few ngos and nium to go and study these things even to study those parameters it requires money we calculate it suppose we do all kinds of parameters flow meters and all that we give them an app we have prepared an app to give to them and we are doing a survey now to do that also it needs money and they have to pay that money and where where from they will pay money you know you know hyderabad and then so in delhi where we give a free water even there people feel that you know maintenance costs are high and they are not able to maintain that uh, you know on site system so this have to be thought about sure. and uh, second thing that has come into question is that you know what happens to the used water now there is no country where 100% of used water 
has been completely used. It's impossible because we have, you know, taboo attached to the used water. Countries like, you know, Singapore, 36%, uh, 40% of their water is micro-filtered and what become the mixed water with uh, regular water and people are consuming it. And no other country can do this. I mean, Israel may be, 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 be doing a little, I doubt it. Certainly not in India where people have such a taboo on everything. So what to do with this water? Some other sessions can be, yes, it is for gardening, your grey water, dual pumping system. In fact, can we go to another, to, 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 uh, to a little bit further? And we say that this water has to be tertiary water and micro filter this water, make it as good as a drinkable water and try to, you know, uh, aquifer recharge, groundwater aquifer recharge is another thing we have to think about it. All over our country, particularly in urban areas, groundwater tables are so low, so low, and we have consumed waters of last 3,000 years, saved water in the ground has been, you know, taken out in borewells and all that. I think we need to think about seriously that this water has to be recharged to the ground, wherever your flats are there, wherever your gated communities are there, recharge that water. I mean, these are costly implications. There is no doubt about it. But if we look into the future, climate change is coming. Water is going to be a serious problem for our country. We need to recharge our water bank that is groundwater access. This has to be done and it's being done as you can. So, so uh, let me, sir, intervene at this stage. Uh, yeah. Just one or two points uh, just to have a conversation with you. Now, <clears throat> uh, the, the big question is, even in an advanced country like Japan, where they have uh, had a similar problem of on-site decentralized system. Japan is also, as you know, has a Jokaso Act. They regulate uh, on-site systems. Even there, without a robust regulation in place, micro-level regulation, third-party auditing, uh, auditing of uh, these assets, they couldn't improve the system. Now, even though it's a rich economy, rich communities, the, without a regulatory oversight, often these things uh, fail. Now, given that understanding and situation, uh, do you think uh, who is the right person in metropolitan cities in particular to monitor these assets? Because the building approval is given by the, the city corporations and they let go. And once the building approval is given, the assets are created, but there's nobody to monitor. Now, the PCB is monitoring only certain level of assets. Even that is also not monitored. Now, given this situation of institutional uh, lack of oversight on monitoring and performance assessment, there is a natural tendency that they fall flat. So what is your advice? Who should be the right agency to keep an eye on this? monitor the data, monitor the performance, or shall we create a new sub-entity within the water utility to manage this? Yeah, thank you. It's a very, very important thing, uh, Chariji. See, I'm not saying that there should not be an oversight system. Let it be there. Because if there is no oversight system, everybody will be their own king and they'll not do. It's like a king's cloths kind of thing it will become. Uh, what is important is a sufficient intervention of technology, layering of technology is required. You know, well, you know, too strict monitoring is very good. Make it highly penalized. You know, it's kind of a taboo it should become. Penalize it very heavily, but have a technology, but there must be overseer should be there. Oversight, uh, I mean, utility should be there. It has to be city governance. There is no doubt about it because pollution control board with their minimal kind of, uh, they have their own usages. I mean, industrial pollution and uh, several things are there for them. So I don't expect them to go and monitor every small gated community. But city governance is a minute in there. They have a foot, footprint of their employees everywhere. So either it has to be water utilities like metro water boards in the major cities, or it has to be corporations or municipalities. These two guys have to come together and establish a system. And maybe to assist them, you can have a, you know, a, you know, a third party can be there. You know, accredited third parties have to be done. Some NGOs to create awareness. But I tell you, you know, over a period of time, this, this will become many more actually because stringent kind of uh, speculations will come in because of climate change. You can't afford to lose any chemicals into the environment and circular economy is becoming a byword now. So you should have embedded technologies to capture every minute operations of all the systems and they should be data driven. Data should be collected and portrayed and we should know everyday basis kind of a thing. Machine learning should be there or AI should be provided. You should be kept, you know, out of these 10,000 kind of units in the country or in the city, 
this 200, 200 are not functioning today. Immediately improve the, increase the tariff, water tariff, triple it on, on those days. Because you see, our tariff is so highly subsidized water tariff for domestic users. And then they're not able to pay power tariff. Means it's a poor uh, kind of uh, you know, response from them. Yeah. So they need to be indicated. So we need to have a centralized authority. But centralized authority cannot keep on going every day into their houses. That's very impossible for anybody, any organization. So we should yeah. have embedded technology to data on a day-to-day -day basis, penalize them heavily when this happens. I think this kind of, and it has to be done by city governance, with yeah. some kind of aid from any kind of that part yeah. organization or any urban, urban institutions kind of a thing like yours. Thank you. So, uh, Mr. Dhanakrishnan's advice is that the city government has to lead it. Uh, this activity up front. Uh, technology should be maybe online. Technology could be part of the building approval system. When they install the system, I think the it should be embedded in the system so that the data flow reports reporting becomes much easier. Now, I request uh, Nituji, who is from the regulatory, uh, you know. Perspective. Mr. Tari, uh, Mr. Tari, yes, please, sir. Uh, please um, excuse me to leave because I have another uh, small uh, application. Yes, yes. Thank you, please. You thank you very much for this uh, timely innovation you. and timely intervention. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, Neetuji, uh, you know, you uh, we had a conversation also, and uh, uh, you are well aware of what's happening in this space. And the Pollution Control Board is actually regulating properties about 20,000, but often they do not come to you the PCB for consent to operate. They take only permission, but when it comes to operation, they don't often come. So what is the, what should be done to strengthen this whole uh, gamut of challenge that in front of us, where a very beautiful asset of large capacity is created, but often underutilized because we don't have a good regulatory system, performance reporting system. What do you need to do? Uh, good evening to all the participants and uh, thank you Charikaru for uh, giving me this opportunity. Uh, my topic is basically on uh, regulatory framework for uh, uh, private STPs. So under uh, uh, Water Prevention and Pollution Control Act uh, 1974, PCB has the pass to uh, basically give the design, the layout and uh, standards of effluent and then uh, inspect also STPs, uh, be it in uh, private or be it in uh, uh, in industry or government setup. However, uh, only those uh, buildings which are having more than 20,000 square meter of built up area and which require uh, environmental uh, uh, clearance permission, there they need also CFO and CFE from uh, Pollution Control Board. So only those buildings uh, we regulate not uh, uh, built up area less than 20,000 uh, square meter. As per our data, uh, almost 600 such buildings are uh, either in pipeline or uh, they have taken permission or they are like uh, in the process. So in, in these 600, 150 are already existing in Hyderabad. I'm only talking about uh, big building uh, apartments where EC is required. Uh, 300 to 400 construction uh, are actually So... Uh, we zoom or we are like uh, giving notices also that this comes from suppose you have taken EC and before uh, taking any uh, occup uh, occupational uh, certificate you need CFA and then others are uh, uh, again like uh, in the in a very initial uh, phase and monitoring so this is the status about uh, those buildings which need EC and which need CFO CFA for uh, SCPs. Coming to uh, regulatory framework uh, for uh, SGPs, uh, when we give us CFE and CFO, those buildings uh, where the built up area is more than 20 million square meter, we uh, actually ask for two uh, uh, requirements. One is SGPs to be uh, constructed, and second, the entire water has to be recycled and reused for uh, themselves. They have to show a mechanism whether uh, it is used for their own or they are is it, uh, having some uh, agreement with some industry or some uh, setup where this waste water is going to be, uh, treated water is going to be uh, utilized. That is one part. Second, we also ask for organic uh, harvest. So these are two requirements, very less, but uh, this is that. And uh, I uh, would like to inform you that unless these requirements
Priyanka? Hello. Uh, yes, I think we lost her. I'll just check. Uh... Okay, so uh, <clears throat> until uh, uh, Nithuji comes back, so, Chaurasi Sahib, I would like to uh, pull you in just for a minute or two. Yeah, Nituji is back. Over to you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think uh, we lost connection in between. Uh, so, basically, what I was saying that uh, unless those requirements are uh, met, we are not giving any permission. So, no problem regarding the construction of STP. STPs are in place. When STPs are in place, you are talking about uh, monitoring. Monitoring through uh, some... Uh, uh, framework, I, it can be city government, government it can be a water body, it can be a pollution control board. Uh, I would uh, actually support Dana uh, uh, just now that he has give, given some uh, suggestions that if a body which is eligible or which has the uh, capacity to monitor, it can be only city government because number of apartments are going uh, in a very, very expo exponential way. If you see that luxury apartment uh, in Hyderabad, that is a new way of life now. So as the like uh, lifestyle and uh, purchasing power will increase, more such number of apartments will come in metro city like uh, Hyderabad. So we need a body which has the capacity and the uh, wherewithal and the money to actually monitor. PCP uh, per se, we are monitoring uh, all the STPs which are constructed by Hyderabad Metro Water. Larger STP, he very rightly said that those residential apartment cannot be uh, cannot be uh, termed as STP. They are basically water treatment uh, uh, water treatment uh, 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 instrument, not basically STP. So big STPs big. Uh, take the regular monitoring. We also monitor uh, almost 180 lakes of Hyderabad, the water quality and all those things. For a private uh, residential apartment, uh, first, we don't have the manpower. Very, very few. Uh, we, we work with only 241 uh, uh, regular A's and D's, and we have to take control of industry. That is our core area. And you know, all the industries are also in uh, expansive uh, mode more and more number of industries are coming. So I think it's very difficult for us to take up this uh, uh, monitoring business uh, in our ambit. Uh, we are right now do uh, with, with great difficulty uh, able to monitor these STPs of uh, Metro Water. That is one part. Second, uh, no uh, civil, civil civic body uh, will be having the manpower to go daily in these apartments, even weekly, even monthly, and monitor. It's, it's highly... Uh, uh, improbable and uh, impossible also because you have to all these uh, uh, residential apartment association all these um, maintenance committee they have to have the technical knowledge they have to have the know how to run their own system the system should run on auto uh, pilot mode that 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 is happening in developing uh, and de even developed countries so nobody is there to uh, like license permit us to monitor you to uh, give you directions at every step to come and uh, uh, check your system. The, the technology is the only way. So online monitoring system is the uh, way to do it. Online monitoring system also, our lab capacity, PCB, is not sufficient enough. It's, sure. it's only good for industry. Right now also, we are having only 17 categories of hazardous waste. Even uh, water body also online uh, monitoring is done only for 20 STPs, although, although they're running 31 STPs. So we are connected only with uh, 20. The another uh, 11 is uh, in the pipeline. So you see sure. the at which level we are working. So right now, I think uh, it's not practical for PCB to yeah. uh, monitor either online or uh, through manpower. But the future has to be uh, set up. And I think it's in uh, city gov uh, government level where online monitoring can be done. And uh, sure. from technical side, we are uh, here to give you, like uh, give city gov government all the uh, know-how, how to basically, the, we can train the staff, we can train the RWA members because they are the uh, local, they are the soldiers on the, uh, on the uh, ground. Uh, uh, only two criteria are important for uh, residential area. One is BOD and second is your, uh, uh, fecal uh, and uh, E. coli uh, system, which is basically, it, it has to be done in situ. Even online, it cannot be done. So there are also technical know-how and technical uh, capacities can be done. We can uh, take up third-party audit 
uh, uh, in uh, different uh, intervals. But on regular basis, uh, the way forward is uh, creating a lot of awareness in the RWA, in the maintenance uh, society, and then uh, sure. monitoring by online monitoring by city government. And then further technical uh, knowledge is to be given by PCB. PCB. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Nituji. I think uh, uh, you have summarized it so beautifully. So what you're saying is that given the, uh, currently the pollution control board, uh, may, many of the PCBs, not only Telangana, but most of the PCBs in the country, they're re regulating at a particular threshold of 20,000 square meter built up area. In some PCBs, it could be less or more. Now, uh, you believe that the, the ones below 20,000 square meter has to be managed and regulated by the city governments uh, concerned. Uh, it could be Hyderabad in this case, or Warangal or any of those places. And the capacity building, the technical capacity building can be taken up by the pollution control board to the city governments and other stakeholders. And uh, awareness creation among the resident welfare associations and the <laughs> building association seems to be the way forward. Now, this is a big challenge. Uh, the big challenge is that the PCB is... Uh, 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 I mean, most of the PCBs do not have staff to monitor. At the same time, city governments do not consider this as a priority at this stage. The priority is to establish the system, but they are not really empowered to monitor. Now, that's the dilemma that we are in. Now, Chori says, uh, before I ask the private sector to come, because I think for them it's you know, it's a music to your, he, you know, to them that we don't have any system in place. Yes. Uh, so what is that? You know, this is very much under your mandate under used water management. You are painstakingly working at the national level to create 1300 MLD capacity, but we already have close to 10,000 MLD capacity underutilized. Now, Ken, how do we, what is the role of the ministry in this case? What is the role of CPHO? Shall we ignore it, continue to ignore it? Or shall we integrate some of these aspects in the forthcoming Swatch Sarvekshan so that at least the city government start taking ownership to this sector and start monitoring and regulating them? And the PCB is available to them to provide technical assistance and even the laboratory support probably in some cases. So yeah. I, let me draw you in into this. Uh, thank you. Very, very pertinent point you have raised, Professor Chari. Uh, one thing I would like to uh, slightly correct, it is not 1300 MLD, but 13,000 MLD, because less than one lakh population, that is the magnitude. But okay. what I am very clearly and very, let us say, explicitly without any hesitation told that what are the constraints that sector is facing. So Correct. we are also aware of these things, but in this case, one solution, what I think can be there, of course, staffing may not be the solution. Maybe some of the agency, uh, state pollution control board or urban development department can engage and they can audit and report apart from what all awareness creation, everything Thing is going on so that may be one way because in smaller smaller stps or facilities online monitoring of it may cost double so wherever it is required and they have more potential their online systems are fine here apart from these things i think uh, that auditing system training that uh, uh, agencies and hand holding them and they in turn do that and go there and even they can operate, let us say, uh, in a city, in a zone, there may be 200, 300 sub facilities. Individual RWA cannot be uh, developing, may not be able to develop so much to do of their own, but they can always chip in some money and this type of agency, they can be given a particular district, particular area, and they can manage that. So this may be one way where we can have control and we can be continuously monitoring because the problem is very pertinent. We are spending a lot of money, but when it comes for operation and giving service delivery, citizen satisfaction, there it is failing badly. That cannot be allowed anymore. And we are very much conscious and working on it, sir. Let us see how it comes out. Thank you. So I now request uh, Mr. Ramakrishna Raugaru, uh, who is from Credai, uh, who actually is championing the cost within the Credai community. In fact, 
he is taking it as a personal agenda and trying to educate all the builders to sort of promote uh, and maintain this good operational maintenance practices of the system. But I think uh, his perspective is that unless the ecosystem gets developed, it may not be easily uh, possible to com communicate and convince all the builders and all the, the building associations. So uh, Ram Krishnagar, if you are there, would you like to share your views? How do we strengthen the current performance of this private STPs available in households, in gated communities, in apartment blocks, in large number, but often not performing well to the desired level. And this is not something new. In fact, that I think uh, so the studies carried out in Bangalore by IVAG and CDD Boda has pointed out similar uh, res results in the context of Bangalore. So what do we do? How do we strengthen this situation so that our water bodies and public health gets improved. Over to you. Yeah. Uh, good evening, you all. I really appreciate uh, ASCII and uh, Dr. Chari to have taken this initiative uh, to have this webinar on a very, very pertinent and important uh, subject. And uh, good evening to Neetu Prasad, ma'am, and Chaurasya ji and other panelists. Uh, to start with, sir, uh, Mr. Jari was mentioning but uh, maybe jocularly uh, that we don't require or we, uh, we are happy that there is no regulator. No, we need a regulator. We need a regulator who, who handholds us, who guides us. But we need a regulator before there is an enabling mechanism, enabling environment, and more so an enabling infrastructure to discharge my duties. That is a fundamental uh, question, sir. We, like any other citizen, like all of you, we are also aware of the, the, the situation, the, uh, uh, the shortage of the water, the disposal of these uh, sewage systems. We are equally sensitive. And uh, as I am at the receiving end of this whole conversation, especially, I am in majority of it. So, we need to analyze why this is happening, why there are thousands and thousands of treatment plants lying waste, unutilized, unused. A. B. Even if the, some of the uh, these machines are working, why we are not able to dispose the, uh, the excess water, the treated water. So, and the thirdly, take the for the city of Hyderabad. We have a phenomenal growth in the last seven, eight years, unprecedented growth. And commensurately, there was no infrastructure to deal with this discharge. I'm I'm by regulation, I am bound to install a machine which treats the water, which also reuses the water, helps me to reuse the water, but to what extent? Beyond a point, I don't use that water. It needs to be discharged. Where do I discharge? There is, there are no sewer lines. There is no centralized uh, system where I can pump my water to. So these are the pertinent and fundamental questions we need to answer, sir. Yes, we need a regulator, but before we have a regulator on board, we need to have this. We don't say, you know, Mm, bird first or nest first, but they have to go simultaneously. They, they, they have to go in tandem. All these machine, machines which are installed are going to face huge issue now. I'm, I'm, I'm talking in perspective of the city of Hyderabad as an example. Yeah. And many, sure. many cities face like this. They need to have a parallel civil system. I can drill bore wells and pump the water underground to you know, recharge the water table, but there is a limitation for that. Beyond that, we need, we, you know, we need to create, as uh, the, the government or the agencies need to create huge infrastructure to carry this excess water, a centralized pool, a treated water, then it needs to be 
no reuse it to maybe industries and you you can give it to back my own industry i i i consume lot of water for construction i drill bore wells and as uh, dana kishor sir rightly said we have exploited 3000 years old aquifers so we are extracting water from left right and center from by through the by through the earth so if that needs to be contained that needs to be at least minimized so we need to uh, you know have this mechanism in place at the earliest however best regulation we have unless we have this system it is very very difficult to go further so, uh, mr rao just want to uh, step in uh, your point is absolutely right we need uh, a good regulation but also coupled with infrastructure for carrying the excess water post treatment so yes. that uh, uh, with otherwise if there is no drainage system or if there is no sewer system in the locality then it will create unnecessary problem but the point here is while the infrastructure needs to be developed the question i am asking to you is how do you incentivize how do you uh, create a sense of responsibility among the building management associations to treat the water with or without downstream infrastructure even now without downstream infrastructure they are discharging it untreated but the question is can we incentivize them can we motivate them can we regulate them to treat the water and then let it outside the the premises of the apartment what should be done your point is right infrastructure is important yes. downstream but it's equally important that they need to treat it which they are not doing it most of us know yeah i i agree with you there has to be a carrot and stick approach here we need to sensitize we need to have a kind of uh, a, a a mechanism or a counts kind of council specially constituted within this uh, urban management agencies like thmc or pcb or whatever sorts and the rws members need to be roped in as members there so they need to be say, you know educated they need to be sensitized they need to be hand hold and also parallelly we need to have trained personnel sir though we install these machineries expensive machineries one of the challenges we face is the lack of trained personnel the, the, and these systems are not not great systems these are all they are all second generation or whatever so they require constant human monitoring and which is expensive which is not available and uh, and we need to have uh, you know the latest technology it may cost more but it's okay you 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 you, you can't rely on those obsolete technologies and get off results or the undesired results which are not up to our expectations so these issues also need to be addressed yes i fully agree with you uh historically or as a society we irrespective of our income levels we have not matured to those levels of self regulation we, we we have to be very candid about this whether he lives in a three crores dwelling or four crores dwelling or two crores dwelling the awareness is not at desired levels so sure. they need, they need to be educated they need to be there need to be there, there has to be some retribution also in case they don't fall in line so these are the uh, you know sure. uh, measures one need to take so you <clears throat> i think self regulation has certain limitations and you believe that a combination of self regulation and uh, good regulatory intervention is important to improve the performance of the system right now now i would now invite uh, mr baskar uh, mr baskar you are the service provider to most of these builders uh, and the associations uh, offering stp services operation and maintenance services new assets now can you give your perspective because you have been seeing the 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 concerns the building building associations pose they always say the power bill is high the chemical bill is high your operation and maintenance costs are high so how do you deal with it what should be done 
to improve the system performance. And I think you also have collaboration with uh, some of the Japanese uh, companies. They have similar system, but they're somehow they have improved the performance through effective regulation. Would you like to throw some light on, uh, on your ideas and your suggestions? Mr. Bhaskar, over to you. Uh, I can't hear you. Sir, please unmute yourself. Bhaskar, you need to unmute. Mr. Bhaskar comes from a uh, private sector. Uh, he ran, he uh, provides operation and maintenance support to a number of uh, building communities. Uh, operating and maintaining the STPs and used water treatment systems and many other services. Over to you, Mr. Bhaskar. Sir. You are not audible to us. Not really. Am I audible? Yeah, your voice is cracking, but uh, uh, we can make an attempt. So before uh, Mr. Bhaskar steps in, I think uh, his, uh, his network is weak. Uh, Mr. Kalyan Srinivas has raised his hand. Uh, would you like to quickly ask a question, Mr. Kalyan? Yeah, yeah. Uh, good evening, sir. Thank you for this opportunity. I am uh, CCM from Mega Engineering. We are dealing with various uh, uh, sewage treatment plants at a large scale under HMWSSB and uh, uh, we have done a number of treatment plants and over them also we are doing. Yeah. Regarding this uh, community level, I live in uh, Bloomfield XSC and where we have our internal treatment plant system, which is by sewage, it will come almost six to seven meters below the ground and there are a lot of pumping costs. And even after that, HMWSSB is charging 35% sewage cess, uh, uh, on that, though it is completely treated uh, inherently, means within uh, our community by spending a lot of chemicals and power and uh, other things, and we are uh, reusing the same for uh, uh, gardening and treated surplus water at times because there is no stormwater drainage system in and around Telapur or any other uh, suburbs. So we are forced to send it out, so let it out. And apart from that, uh, for HMWSSB, if we want to get any exemption for this storage says about 20% or so, EPTRE is charging very huge cost for assessing the treated water. Means it should be allowed for other uh, this one and along with us because uh, HMWSB has a water uh, lineman who keeps uh, um, line reading or anything monthly first, or, first they will come and now AMR systems are also so, available. So what you're saying is the the... <clears throat> The, the service delivery agency, in this case, Hyderabad Water Board, is charging uh, the sewage cess after you treat the wastewater. Means and we are treating, but there may be uh, that, that is the reason why it is to be separated and the testing charges by EPTRA or any other so government. The testing are, costs are high as well as the sewage tariff is also high and that is one of the uh, concerns you have. Okay. Uh, that can be addressed. That can be addressed. That should be addressed. Uh -huh. yes, yes. Yes. The, the, the last point, the concession yeah. what we will get after getting EPTRI is uh, less than, uh, means the EPTRI charges are more than the concession what we get uh, if we submit the EPTRI report also. <laughs> okay. So, I got your point. <laughs> so, uh, Mr. Bhaskar, can you, can yes, you join? Sir. Yeah. Am I audible, sir? Yes, you are audible. Go ahead. Uh, good evening, Dr. Uh, I mean, Professor Charigaru and uh, respected panelists. Couple of points I have uh, I've been just uh, hearing uh, last uh, couple of minutes. Uh, like, uh, I am the one, like, for the just introduction of the uh, others. I have already, like, executed more than 500 STPs in Hyderabad and all our private segments. And uh, right now, I'm executing more than 50, 60 STPs other than the government segment projects. And uh, also, we have more than 100 sites of 24 by 7 going dams also with me. With this experience, uh, with this uh, little bit of knowledge, what we have and observations we have, I have a few points to point out just to bring to your notice. 
point number one is that uh, like uh, today mr rk rao also is telling like uh, the existing technologies and the new technologies possibilities sir to bring to notice as of now majority of the people are going with the technologies of mbbr technology and spr technology and the latest can be of mbr technology with the membrane bioreactor where like the all the parameters of the central central pollution department will come automatically point number 1 but that is little expensive but if you really people look into two years of uh, wind dam cost uh, it will become uh, life cycle cost will become more or less equivalent or cheaper point number 1 but only the concern here is that 100% of the water to be treated without any other uh, other choices hope the point you understood yeah number 2 the treated water reusability policies there are some policy issues also in place where as uh, mr rahul garu said in hyderabad there is uh, many of the sites there is no possibility of uh, leaving the treated water number 1 number 2 as per national building code mr singh ha bahut bana ho raha hai mr singh sir can you mute yeah go ahead Yeah, as per national building code, only maximum 40 to 45 percent of the water can be reused by any of the residential projects. The rest of the 55 percent is to 60 percent of the water they don't know what to do. And in the other hand, if you really look into any commercial buildings, commercial buildings as per national building code, 70 percent of the water will be flushing water. are treated treated water for flushing and gardening applications only 30 percent of the water is required for domestic applications the reality we observe here is that because they want to use this water even for their air conditioning application hvac application also they are struggling for lack of availability of the water wherein the residential projects people are having problems of how to discharge this treated water if you really able to link it up any kind of the possibility of course government has to intervene here thereby a lot of saving of the water will be done point number 1 number 2 thanks to telangana government hyderabad being a water positive city people are not feeling the pinch of non availability of water that's one of the challenge where people are not serious on treatment of water and reuse the water because availability water of water is plenty of available but almost negligible cost now my the way we talk is that if the systems are coming picture and the knowledge levels have been implemented policies have been implemented of this reused water to be used for various applications where human touch is not in place example example industrial application for the cooling tower applications for hvc chiller water applications or many other applications uh, this water can be comfortably used but unfortunately infrastructure is not in place to transfer this water to that place that has to be taken in the place number 2 in in hyderabad especially when you take up sudden uh, denser areas like gachiboli areas or uh, kokapet areas many areas of the commercial buildings as well as residential buildings are very very close by if we can bring them the link it up these two places of course now new townships are coming like this only like where the waste of the housing uh, residential extra water will be giving to the commercial areas they will be using efficiently and thereby net zero possibility is coming so as of now saying, the prime minister maskar garu what you are saying is that yes sir the waste of residential treated yes. waste water or used water of residential yes. can can be easily monetized and sold to the commercial establishment for non potable applications you think that there is a market but the linkage is not being done and yes. there is no used water exchange platform to connect these two supply and demand uh, you know segments is that yes, what you think yes sir yes sir that's very interesting yeah please yeah. go ahead you can see an example i will tell you for an example sir in gachibali if you look into that infos is a campus where i operate 12 12 lakh liters a day they require where like their domestic requirement only 30 percent of the 12 lakh liters the rest everything is only recycled water the requirement is that whereas if you really look into opposite that or beside that there are so many residential projects are there 
where lakhs of liters they are consuming and they are struggling to discharge that water. So, now the issue has to come in that their excess water has to be given to this area with certain charges. Like example, their infosys require a good quality of water. Maybe that residential project has to give similar water quality at some cost. At some cost. Or alternatively, they can give RASI waste and pay to infosys at some cost so that they can manage themselves to their quality levels. If this kind of a bridge can be brought in by the government of Telangana or whichever agencies are involved in this, thereby we can save huge water. That's Thank one you. of the one yeah. of the areas. That like how, like when you look into that construction, example, some of the departmental, some of the governments in uh, Gurgamanda, like uh, they have a policy that they, they are using uh, the treated water only for construction application. Like that kind of an application, these waters are uh, less tedious water, treated water, comfortably they can use for construction. Only that either a small awareness has to be brought in that uh, people should not drink that because this is not being treated to the portable level. Thank you. I yes, think uh, these are very, very valuable suggestions. So one way in absence of a robust regulatory system, the suggestion you are making is that is to create an economy, circular economy format in this so that the waste of one particular segment can be used as a resource for the other segment and mutually can be beneficial in the whole process. Thereby, there will be a self-discipline that could come uh, exactly. in this whole uh, game. I think uh, this is super useful. Now, uh, I have two more points if it permits. Yeah, please if go ahead. Quickly, you can make those two points. Number one, yeah. number one, the actual problem is a lot of people think that using of a severe treated water is because of the color, smell and, uh, and uh, psychological feelings. Number one, all these color issues will come not because of STP's problem, this majority because of the basement ventilation problem. Okay. Unfortunately, that areas has to be uh, totally, uh, totally overlooked areas unless basement ventilation problems are not addressed, uh, this problem will not settle. So, this is a more of a psychological problem to be addressed, sir. that will help so, a lot uh, to bring the efficiency improvement here. Yeah. Point number one. Point number two is that... Uh, the other point is that a lot of people think that this is a an optional challenge is there because of the regulation, not because of the self-discipline. Number three, because of that psychology, people are going with a very low class, uh, unskilled people, thereby the qualities have been not maintained. In turn, everybody is under the impression that the sewage treatment plant waters cannot be brought into the decent levels, uh, which regulation has to bring in to use uh, with the skilled labor, thereby this entire problem will be addressed. Okay, you're raising That's another one of the areas you have to look into. Yeah, you're raising another important point. Apart from yes, having regulation in terms of monitoring, I think yes. uh, like the way many countries have done, uh, they only have to engage trained, certified professionals for managing these assets. So that yes. is completely absence in this case. And that's one of the reasons you believe is actually resulting in underperformance of these uh, private STPs. Uh, I'm one just watching time. Yeah, last point, uh, one, Yeah. Yeah, one more last point, sir. People like us, who are, we are ready to set up, uh, if the government is supporting a small uh, STP up to the tuna for 5 MLD, 10 MLD, where like uh, we can treat that water subject to that water, there, there is a market has been created for this kind of application. Thereby, load will be reduced a lot on the main STPs. Sir. This is one of the important points has to be looked into that, sir. And uh, as we are talking about net carbon issues and all, net zero policies and all, unless until we address these areas, uh, it is a far away to go for these of the areas. Sir. Thank you, Bhaskar Garo. I think you raised uh, very, very valuable uh, points. Number one, <clears throat> if we can fix the problem of private STPs, the pressure on the public system will come down. The yes. Pressure to establish new treatment plants by the city authorities would also be minimized. That's number one. Second is without fixing this problem, net neutrality that we the 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 building community is speaking about cannot be achieved. I think from both perspectives, we need to fix this problem. Thank you very much for your valuable suggestion. One, one small one more second, sir, if you don't mind. Organizations like Indian yeah, Plumbing Association are there. 
to support uh, the departments and there are so many consultants are in place where yeah. we are ready to support the systems and uh, as an advisory role we can do which already they are supportive system and advise this for amrut team also so thank you thank you very much uh, yeah, so i'm you. just conscious of the time thank you for your valuable suggestions and offer of ipa to support the cause of uh, this uh, used water management greatly appreciated so mr thank arora your so hand is up would you like to quickly ask a question thank you mr chari mr chari i advocate the same point what you uh, uh, raised in initially that the gray water and blackish water should be separate and we should use the gray water after small treatment and uh, blackish water because we, we can treat in cluster way or any of the different so solutions are available my most of points covered by mr bhaskar basically we are from same trail and uh, he is uh, heading uh, ipa uh, hyderabad chapter i am from jaipur and almost same points whatever i want to raise covered by the mr bhaskar my point is uh, we should involve ngos like ipa uh, igbc and credi they involve and they get the information from the industry, uh, all the uh, buildings whatever the their problems if they not able to run the stbs they should contact all these organization and they support them second sure. one uh, we should involve few of startup these startup can get the facility whatever the water they collect from the building that can be utilized in any public place for park for lawn and for industry and that payment should be made by them uh, through any uh, mode like from government department from industry department or to that industry because all of industries get the water without subsidy and they yeah. are always in scarcity so that invo involve the industry department they collect all this water and uh, further treatment if required they can do so this can be possible and cpho also can involve there and they invite volunteers these volunteers can be trained and after these volunteers without any uh, uh, supposed to get monetary benefit they can involve there so sure. all most of points already covered again Thank i you, have sir. to uh thanks to all panelists and uh, mr chari you and mr bhaskar mr chorathia thank you sir thank you thank you mr arora because you made a very good point uh, we need to sort of uh, promote some startups who could play the role of aggregators who can actually bridge the gap between the demand and supply as mr bhaskar said thank you very much for your advice uh, so i think we have exceeded the time but we are not completely conclusive that's actually is very very evident so i would again draw in for 2 minutes or a minute if neetu ji is still there i would like to bring her in to check with her is there any way we can strengthen the regulation i think one common uh, suggestion that's coming out through this conversation is that there is a need for strengthening the regulation there's a need for defining the role of the city government in terms of monitoring uh can we take this agenda forward is it possible i think neetu ji is not there i would request uh, dr chorus here uh, what are, what are your perspectives on this can from the national government's point of view can we issue an advisory eventually the honorable prime minister didn't say it has to be only public stp he said honorable prime minister said used water should not be discharged into the water body he didn't say very clearly or it didn't mean that only government should invest stps the private sector stps should not be regulated or should not be controlled or should not be monitored so in a way we have a mandate sir we we have a mandate to deal with this so can we bring out an advisory can we bring out a, a direction to all the states to look into this matter carefully and integrate this agenda in the forthcoming swachh sarvekshan and give a certain amount of weightage i'm i'm sort of uh, i'm sorry if i'm uh, you know putting you unnecessarily on the spot but i thought you know it's important i am very emotional about this subject so that's why i'm you please take me uh, in a positive way 
Yes, the Professor Chari, you also know I am also equally emotional about this subject. So whatever you are telling, it is in fact a, a same level of, uh, I say, uh, feeling I am also having. And uh, uh, such a survey definitely, uh, whatever next edition comes, these private uh, STPs, wherever it is properly maintained, we'll try to see how it comes in the fold. But... Uh, Two, three things you mentioned and uh, uh, other other members also that is especially very important that private sector may whatever STPs are going to be created, their problems need to be studied and solution to be provided so they can take lead and more and more, uh, let us say, this used water burden they take on themselves and responsibility on government reduces only to some of the area where such type of, let us say, association is not there. So this is one thing. And second thing regarding this reuse of treated water, I think whatever is coming from the apartments and other places, that treated water is of quite good quality. And in most of the cities, I will find that with 13, 14, 15 finance commission grants, sufficient drains are available. Maybe in some parts it may not be there as we have uh, discussed in that deliberations. So even it comes through natural or some of the uh, man-made drains, I think not only it will keep on recharging and it will be good for the environment of the city, but at local places wherever need arises, that can be utilized. But all is needed, some model document is studying in two, three cities and different model that, that will guide all other cities to localize, prepare their plan uh, uh, suiting to that requirement because uh, some guidance only we can give the city level solution has to be evolved by brilliant planning there and this is going to economize not only cost or endem and other thing but in many many fold it is going to be helpful so I, I think there is a lot of scope to work on it and uh, since this point has been raised i am learning and uh, finding that what are the challenges available so some point of time these points have been captured let us now work together uh, whatever the requirements are there are points is is still to be addressed. We will work together. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for your, uh, you know, positive feedback on this. So, are there any other questions that we have? Anybody would like to flag? Uh, we can take one or two questions. Otherwise, uh, uh, you know, this is this agenda is super important. Anybody else? Mr. Vishal, would you like to come in? I, uh, I heard you speak. Okay. Mr. Vishal, you can mute uh, your speaker. So, uh, friends, I think uh, uh, this webinar is used to sensitize ourselves about the, uh, you know, the, the challenge before us in terms of private STPs doing its job. It's a work in progress. We may not have been conclusive in terms of what needs to be done, but a lot of ideas have come through this conversation. We are going to consolidate these ideas. We will work with the state governments. We will work with the city governments. We will create a nice uh, template for the state and city governments to act on a model documents to act on. Likewise, as uh, Dr. Choresia mentioned, we would also work with collectively, we will work with uh, the national government to make sure that this agenda gets amplified, gets due attention, so that, as Dr. Choresia said, the polluter should pay for it, polluter should solve its his her own problem, and only certain portion of the way used water can be treated through public sector investments. I think if we can move in that direction, I think uh, our goal of achieving Swachh Bharat 2.0 will be much, much faster. Dr. Mahindra, you have any quick comment? Otherwise, Professor Chari, I have two small points whenever you give the opportunity. Please go ahead, sir. Dr. Mahindra, just uh, make your point yeah. and then I will ask uh, Dr. Ratni to conclude. I sure, think sure. Sir, uh, Dr. Ratni, you should conclude them. Yeah. Yeah. So my, my point is, yeah, I, I totally agree with uh, Dr. Chari and uh, whatever suggestions mentioned by Mr. Bhaskar. So, uh, since uh, it is about strengthening the regulatory mechanism, I just want to add one or two thoughts what that occurred to me. 
if we can categorize this private stps from the residential industrial and especially the hospitality and healthcare uh, okay these are the things if we can categorize maybe uh, then it will be easy uh, even for uh, the startups like us who can in fact uh, enable uh, this particular monitoring mechanism for the regulatory authorities and that way it can be actually you know uh, it's, it's basically ease of monitoring what i feel yeah yeah thank uh, you dr chaurasia uh, ji please that's a good point uh, mahendra garu uh, yes. dr chaurasia over to you uh, uh, yes. you can probably uh, give your concluding comments also yeah yeah thank you thank you uh, I, I, my point is related to i think you are about to visit i think uh, karad and malkapur i learned there for uh, 24 by 7 that capturing that thing uh, fortunately few days back i went there only to say their wastewater management system and what i am telling it is from public perspective that equally holds good for even private people also whether they are having in their rwa or uh, some other association and other methods are working there uh, what what we could see only two point that leadership uh, leadership plays a very important role one single leadership person whether it is executive or elected leadership if they could realize and understand this that which way we have to go they can not only take entire that system but even people also so this is one area once you are going to capture that you will realize that a leadership can make what level of change and in future the more and more focus i think hours being at central level and at regional level to only motivate and train the leaders after that below they will be able to take care of themselves and the example is karad and malkapur both where a single person's motivation not only properly convince all people to treat even to convince or uh, to pay them a share for constructing this uh, closed network and over and above the biggest sector where this used water can be uh, utilized is agriculture industry horticulture construction they are minuscule 4% 5% 10% but around every town there is a huge agricultural field available in country in most of the towns there by even putting 2 3 km this pvc pipe hdp pipe the entire area can be treated and here we should not go that all standards should come everything will become then we will start the sure. people are working this is a organic sort of pure type of water not industrial one even if you don't don't taste don't do anything if you treat up to secondary level and utilize in these fields no harm is going to happen after 4 5 year of course i will tell that we have to work and strengthen it so sure. two things major one agriculture and second leadership these two things are very very important to drive this sector whether it is in private or whether it is in government thank you great points i think uh, leadership around circularity leadership around used water management is equally important as you said both in the public sector as well as in the private sector i think that is going to keep the uh, you know the the, the momentum Uh, as we envisage in this so thank you very much uh, for joining this uh, all of you for joining and staying so late on a weekend second saturday greatly appreciate uh, for your participation we are going to consolidate this understanding consolidate uh, all the you know the queries as well as some of the recommendations that came out during this conversation and circulate to all of you including the state and the city governments and a copy will be uh, marked to government of india too thank you very much for taking out your time and happy weekend uh, goodbye bye bye thank you thank you everybody thank you thank you so much